welcome back. Now I'm going to do a video. It's called Positive Spherical Geometry. Uh, I'm going to be illustrating some of the key features and properties of what we call a positive spherical geometry. We learn about this in cosmology when we're talking about the different possible shapes of the universe. One possible shape is flat Euclidean geometry. In the flat Euclidean geometry, uh, the universe will behave like the, according to the geometry rules that we learn about. Parallel uh, rays of light will stay parallel. The angles of a triangle will add up to 180. And then the circumference of a circle will be pi times its radius, um, right? Or to, um, pi times its diameter. So uh, the positive spherical geometry is a different kind of geometry. And we can use the surface of a globe, the surface of the Earth, or any other globe to illustrate. So its properties. The first thing I want to show you is a kind of an interesting question that I've, I've even had um, as a person. Uh, let's say, for example, someone is flying from LA. I have here um, a pin uh, that I put uh, where the LA is. And then someone is flying to, let's say, something like Egypt or somewhere a little bit even south of LA. Uh, it could be anywhere, really. It, it could even be north of LA. It could be Paris, Europe, anywhere in Europe. I have a pin here in um, Dubai, right? So I have here one in LA, one in Dubai. And uh, my question has been, sometimes I've th thought of this, and I'm sure maybe some of you have thought of this. If an airplane is going from LA to Dubai, why doesn't it just fly over like this at the same latitude, or at least close to the same latitude, fly over like this and go to Dubai that way? Why do a lot most planes why do they go across the northern America to Canada, over Greenland, and down through Europe, down to Dubai, right? It seems, at first, it seems like counterintuitive as if they're going to northern America, they're going to Canada, and then they're going, going back down, they're going all the way up to Greenland, and then they're going back down from Europe down to all the way to Dubai. So. The question is, why does that happen? Why don't they just maintain the same latitude, the latitude of LA is 34, maintain the same latitude and then just go across? So what I did to illustrate, I put those two pins, I took a string and I tried to make the string as short as possible. And when I connected the string, notice what the string tends to do. The string tends to naturally go over the top right here. And see, you can see her. The string goes from LA it goes to Canada here, right? It goes over Greenland. This is Greenland right here, okay? And then it goes all the way through uh, Europe, Northern Europe, Sweden, down Sweden, and then down Europe, and then Asia, and then it goes down to um, uh, Dubai right there. So if I try to uh, unhook this string, about 30, 34 degrees, 30 degrees, and go across like this, Right, and go all the way to Dubai, you see that it, it basically cuts short. So the journey ends like right here, and it doesn't even make it to Dubai. So actually there's several uh, thousand miles left to still get to Dubai, right? So even though it seems, when you look at a flat map of the Earth, it seems that the shortcut would just be to maintain the same latitude and even maybe even head downwards, right? Head downwards, to Dubai, right, like this. But if you do that, it, it actually makes the trip longer. In order to make the trip shorter, the shortest possible, you take the string, you connect it to this pin, and then you tie it around the pin several times until it's as tight as possible. So you basically try to fit the shortest possible string between them, and then it forces the path to go up through Northern America to Canada to Greenland and then down Europe and then to Dubai. So that answers an interesting question. This is known as a geodesic. A geodesic is the shortest point between two points. On a flat map, the shortest point is a straight line. It just seems like the shortest point should be that. But on a curved, curved universe and a curved Earth, the shortest point is not necessarily what you would think would be. You can do this between any two paths between any two cities and you can find what the best path that the airplane should take. Now I want to get to showing a couple properties of um, uh, positively curved geometry. I'm going to make a triangle, right? 
And I'm going to show that on a, a positively curved uh, geometry that the, the, these lines are actually a bit bulged outward like this, right? They are kind of bulged, bulging outward. And then when you actually measure the angles of the triangle on a curved geometry, they end up adding larger than 180. So it's going to end up adding larger than 180. Whereas on a flat geometry, it's perfect straight line. When you add up the angles of a triangle, it adds up to exactly 180. So let's start by doing that. So I have this line right here that I've already connected the cities of LA and uh, Dubai. So what I'm going to do is take my marker and I'm going to actually mark on my sphere the, along this line try to get the best possible line possible. So you got here like this. So I'm going across the, the geodesic all the way from LA to Dubai. Okay. Then I'm gonna take that string and I'm gonna find the geodesic between LA and another city. And now I'm gonna make another line from LA to, uh, this one's Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So I'm gonna take the string, I'm gonna tie it around here and tie it a couple times until I get it tight. Try to make the best line I can. Okay. And then I'm going to go from Rio de Janeiro to um, Dubai, right? To close the triangle. Okay. So you can see the triangle that I have now. Okay, so the, the triangle looks like this from Los Angeles. It goes over Greenland down to Dubai. Then from Los Angeles, it goes down to Brazil right here. And then I'm going to put it down at the, ver the uh, vertex and measure that angle. So basically, you just line up the zero degrees with what, one of the lines. And then the other one tells you the angle of that one. So this one shows you the angle is about 115. You can tell it's an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90. So I'm going to try my best to measure it. It looks like it's about 115. So 115 degrees, this angle. And you can tell that it is an obtuse angle. So right now I have here from L.A., to uh, Rio de Janeiro, and then uh, Dubai, uh, Dubai. So this is 115 degrees. So then I'm going to measure the other angle. Take this pin out, and then put my vertex here, and then measure this angle. This angle looks like it's closer to 90, okay? It's gonna be 95, slightly larger than 90 right here, okay? So 95 degrees, it's slightly more than 90, okay? So this is gonna be 95, and then this line here, uh, this line looks, on, on the map it look, kind of looks curved like this, right? the triangle. So this is going to be 95. Okay. And then the final angle is going to be at the vertex where LA is. Okay. And then put this one here. And then this is also slightly larger than 90. Uh, it's about 100. 100 degrees. Well, if you add this, 
it already looks like it's obviously greater than 180, right? So naturally, because of the curvature of a positively curved surface, the lines themselves are curved. And so when you make a triangle out of them, the, the, the triangle, the angles of the triangle add up more than 180. So 100 to 115 to 95. So this is gonna be 10, one, 10, 11, one, two, three, a lot more than 180 degrees, 310 degrees. So depending on how big your triangle is, uh, the, it could get a number much different than 180. If you make a small triangle, then the angles are likely to be 180 or close to 180. But if you make a big triangle on the map, you can get a number that's really, really big. This is what we are doing now when we are studying cosmology. We're trying to find the structure and the shape of the universe. And in order to do that, we have to be able to do this kind of stuff, map the universe over large scales and see, does it fit the criteria of the curvature of positively curved space or a flat curve? So far, all our experiments are showing that the universe is flat. It has a flat curvature features and the angles of the triangle add up to 180. In a different video, I'm gonna do a video on negatively curved uh, uh, um, uh, geometry, right? Negatively curved, or we call it hyperbolic geometry, right? This one we call it spherical, the other one we call it hyperbolic. They've also tested that out as well to see if the universe uh, fits a hyperbolic, but they've found over and over again that the universe fits a flat geometry. Okay, so what is the, uh, another property of a flat geometry? If you make a circle, the circumference of the circle should be pi times the diameter. In other words, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter should be 3.14, right? So the ratio of the circumference to the diameter in a flat geometry should be the famous number that we have, 3.14, which we celebrate on March 14th, right? March 14th, we call it pi day. But in a curved, positively curved universe, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter will not necessarily be pi. It's gonna be a number different than pi. So let's see, is it gonna be larger than pi or smaller than pi, right? So I'm gonna make a, a circle as possible. And I'll just go around LA while extending it fully out and just go all the way around LA, make it best circle as possible. You see there? I'll do it one more time so it's nice and dark. Okay, so you get the circle here, centered in LA. This is LA and this is a circle. So now let's measure the diameter of that circle and the circumference of that circle as best as possible. In order to measure the diameter of the circle, I'm gonna, I cut a, a string here longer than the diameter. So then I'm gonna tape it down here from the top. I'm gonna tape it down, right? And then I'm gonna go through LA because Los Angeles is the center of the circle. Then I'm gonna put another tape here. Then I'm gonna cut it here. Put it here. I could put one end of the string at the 30 centimeter mark, wherever I want to start. Then I extend it here and it goes all the way to 54. So from 30 to 54, that's 24 centimeters. So the diameter of that circle is 24 centimeters. Okay. Okay. Then start taping it all the way around, distance away. Another tape here. Okay, so now you can see I've gone all the way around. I've put plenty of tape. So you can see the string is as circular as I could do it. It goes all the way around the circle. Then I'm gonna cut the string and then find out the circumference of this circle. Okay, so now I'm starting the string here. I put it on the ruler. I'm starting at 20 centimeter mark and I'm going, I'm stretching it and it's about ending around the 88.5 centimeter mark. So I'm stretching both of the strings as much as they can, as tight as they can. 
So I'm getting about 88 and a half centimeters here. But since I'm starting at the 20 centimeter mark, I have to subtract 20 from 88 and a half. So I'm getting 68 and a half centimeters is the diameter. 68 and a half centimeters. Okay. Well, in school, we've always learned the circumference of a diameter, the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter is pi. That's only in flat geometry, right? Divide these two, what do you get? Divided by the diameter, 2.85. So in a curved, positively curved universe, the number pi is less than 3.14. It depends on how big the circle is, right? Again, so pi is less than 3.14. Uh, or we can say the ratio of the circumference to the diameter in that universe is less than 3.14. In a negatively curved universe, the opposite would be true. Okay? The other thing that I'm going to show is that parallel lines do not stay parallel in a positively curved universe. In a flat universe, the definition of a parallel line is that they stay equidistant. Once a line is a certain distance from another line, and if they're parallel, right? Then they will always remain parallel. They will always remain equidistant. That's in a flat Euclidean geometry, right? In a positively curved geometry, you're going to find that the lines will do this. They will start a certain distance away and they will curve outward and then inward. So we say they're converging towards each other, coming out and then converging back in, right? Whereas in a negatively curved universe, the opposite will happen. The lines will start like this, and then they will diverge outward like this. This is negatively curved universe, right? So that's negatively curved universe, and then I'll show that in a different video. In a positively curved universe, they will go like this, and then they will cur converge back inward. So this is called converging. Lines will converge, and this is called diverging. Diverging parallel lines will diverge outward. Parallel lines will uh, converge. It will, they will go out and then they will converge back in. So they will not stay parallel. In either universe, the parallel lines will not stay parallel, right? And then we've tested this out in the universe as well with many, many different kinds of uh, observational tests. And we've also found that the universe behaves as a flat Euclidean geometry on the large scale also, you see. So then how are we going to test that out? Well, all I need to do is just take pins that are equidistant from each other. To extend it outward, what I'll do is I'll go down straight on a, um, on a, a longitude line, straight down LA. It's uh, equidistant from LA, right? So then it's going to go down all the way down, stretch this string as much as possible, okay? And then put a pin there. And it ends up being pretty much on the circle that I had drawn, right? So then I'm going to do the same with uh, Dubai. I'm going to take the same string that I have here, straight longitude line, stretch the string as much as possible. So the distance between these two pins, between LA and that pin, and between Dubai and that pin is the same. Okay, so now if I do a string from here to here, as you can see, the geodesic, it's going to naturally move uh, up and down, right? It's not going to go straight. The shortest line between the LA and Dubai we've already shown is not a perfect straight line like this. So it's going to go like this. The line, I've already drawn that line earlier to do the triangle. I'm going to do it with a different color. It goes like that. You see? And then I'm going to do a line from down here all the way to the, the, the bottom pin. Then you're going to see the lines will going to go outward they're not going to stay parallel, and then they're going to converge back in. And you can see the, the shortest point between this point and this one converges out like this. So it's pretty obvious to tell. You have to go down this way. So if you were going from whatever place that is in the middle of the ocean, you go like this all the way down, all the way down, and then like that. Okay, so now you can see how these lines they start equidistant. Over here, they're also equidistant, right? But they don't maintain that equidistance. They go outward like this. One goes from the top, one goes from the bottom, and then they meet. 
And you could do that with any other two points too. You can make it a little bit shorter point too. You could say, you can make a random point here in the middle of America. Just go make another one. Make a, a line like this. And then make another point, another point. And then draw the shortest point between those two lines. And then it, you, the marker naturally curves also as you're doing this. You can kind of see that the lines go up and then down. This one goes down and back up. So the opposite will happen in a negatively curved universe. So for these ones, the, the effect was drastic. It really went, this one really went up, this one really went down, and then they met back up here and they were equidistant at the end. Okay, so you can see these three features that the parallel lines don't stay parallel, they converge for positively curved universe. Then the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter is less than 3.14. And then the angles of a triangle add up to be larger than 180, right? And then I also showed you how the shortest distance between two points is not necessarily what you think it would be that maintaining the same latitude, okay? So with this video, you see some really good features of a positively curved spherical universe. Thank you very much.